Hello and welcome to this video. If you are using Lego electronic stuff, battery boxes or stuff like that, then sooner or later you will find the problem that batteries get dry or uh, get empty and then you have to buy new ones or you have to recharge them and maybe you ask yourself which battery or which rechargeable battery is the best option. And I got the same question or I asked myself the same question. So I decided to take a look into this question or to make a few tests. And these tests have no scientific purpose. I think that they are good enough that you can get an idea of the general direction where the values are going, but they are not really scientific, they are not exact, not ac accurate. So uh, take them with a grain of salt. But anyways, I want to show them in this video. And uh, there are a few different combinations that I tested. Uh, the AnyLoop rechargeable AAA battery, the AnyLoop rechargeable AA battery, the Intenso Energy Ultra battery, the AA and the AAA version. I didn't test more batteries because I think that it doesn't make sense from an environmental perspective. Batteries can be different, so other batter batteries might have other results, but I think that one type of battery is enough for my purpose. And we have rechargeable batteries. We have the power functions rechargeable battery, which got sold until 2017 or something like that. And we have the Keybrick One. That's a third party rechargeable battery for the powered up hub. And it has different energy modes. So I tested two of the three or two of three of the energy modes. And that were the th uh, that other things that I tested. I also tested different uh, battery boxes and stuff like that, but we will talk about that later. And I used this for testing. So this is the complete testing setup. I've got a place for the battery that gets there. Then there are third-party adapter cables for powered up devices so that I can connect them to this plug. This plug goes into the energy meter so I can measure the input voltage, the input current and the output voltage and the output current. And um, there are a few things that use energy and that are LEDs or lights. I used lights so that the output current is about 100 amp uh, milliampers. I think that's a good value. First I used a medium power functions motor, but that made some noises that I didn't want to hear for a long time, so I decided to use lights instead. I recharged the batteries and then I uh, plugged it into this setup. Then I turned the battery box on and then I measured the voltage, the output, uh, the input voltage, and I let the lights shine and I waited until the battery is empty. And the values get transferred to this EV3 brick where they are stored in a file and then we can read them or we can transfer them to a computer and analyze them for future uses. So this is the setup. Basically, I emptied the battery, I recharged the batteries, I emptied them and measured the output voltage with this setup. And there was a load of about 100 milliamps. The measurements aren't exactly because this, uh, this measurement unit changes the output voltage if the input voltage changes. So different batteries or different input or different uh, rechargeable batteries result in different energy combinations. So uh, take all of that with a grain of salt, but their general direction should be okay. But now let's take a look at the program. 
this is the program. We have the main path, which measures the values and stores the values, a path for the output, so that you can see the values on the on the screen of the EV3, and there's one path for some battery boxes that require some motor to be moved or stuff like that to keep the receiver or to keep the battery box alive to keep it online or enabled or on because some have a timeout and would turn themselves off automatically. But let's go through the main part. First, start is being written into the output files. I store the input voltage, the output energy and the time. And I have the start text because sometimes you forget to transfer the files to the computer and then you don't know where the measurement stopped and where the next measurement starts. So uh, the start symbol basically shows where one measurement stops and where the next one starts. Then we have vari variables for these three values. And then we measure the values in the loop. We store them in the variables. We store them in a file. The variables are used for the output. And then we wait 30 seconds and repeat everything. Each 30 seconds, we check if the energy in the energy storage of the measurement unit is below 60. So if the battery box doesn't give enough energy, or if the LEDs need more energy than the battery box gives, and we check if the input voltage is below 1, because then the battery box would be out. And if one of both are true, the loop uh, doesn't continue, and the EV3 makes a noise so that I can see that the measurement is finished. But now let's get to the results. Here we are again, and first of all, the description of the diagrams is in German, sorry for that, but I will translate everything so you should understand it. In Germany we say Akku, in English you would uh, say rechargeable battery. So this is an example for a Control Plus hub that has a rechargeable battery. They're in a loop, double A battery, I think. This is a normal diagram for these measurements, and I want to explain how the diagrams look like and what they tell us. We have two axes. On the x-axis, we have the time in hours. So in this case, the batteries or the rechargeable batteries lasted for around eight hours. And we have the voltage on the y-axis. So it starts at eight volts, and then it is pretty constant in the middle part, around 7.4 volts or something like that. And then the value drops until it's zero volt. I will publish all of the files so that you can create your own diagrams. So you can find them in the, in the description. In this diagram, we have a comparison of the different batteries and rechargeable batteries. And keep in mind that all of these values are not scientific. I don't have any scientific requirements. So these measurements are only maybe for a general idea of how everything might behave, but they're not, or you shouldn't use them as final proof that the curse would look exactly like this in your case. And here we have four diagrams. In blue, we have the double A batteries. In red, we have the triple A batteries. In green, we have the double A rechargeable batteries, the inner loop batteries, the uh, Normal batteries that aren't rechargeable are intenso batteries. And in purple, we have the AAA rechargeable batteries. And this is a bit problematic because there are many different brands of rechargeable batteries and normal batteries. So this comparison might not be fair because the normal batteries are pretty cheap. And I think that N-loop is more on the expensive side. So it's not really fair, but it this diagram shows that there's actually not that much of a difference between normal batteries and rechargeable batteries. And the rechargeable batteries hold the voltage much better. So the normal batteries start at a higher value, but they drop in, in the value pretty fast. And the rechargeable batteries 
can hold the value much better. In this specific configuration, rechargeable batteries would always be better in my opinion because you could recharge them and there is no real benefit for normal batteries. And the AAA batteries, either the rechargeable ones or the not rechargeable ones, hold a bit longer than three hours, while the AA batteries hold around eight hours. I couldn't finish the measurement for the AA batteries because the input voltage was too low for the measurement unit and that's the reason why it couldn't measure the values anymore. Next we have a comparison between different rechargeable batteries and complete rechargeable batteries. So these are only for complete uh, batteries. It's not for AA or AAA batteries, but rechargeable batteries that contain the complete thing. So we have the Keep Rig 1, which is a replacement for the battery holder and holds a rechargeable battery. And we have the Lego Power Functions rechargeable battery. And the Keep Rig 1 has two modes. It has the boost mode, which gives more voltage, but it doesn't last as long. It has a normal mode, which has less voltage, but lasts longer. And it also has an echo mode, but I couldn't measure it for the same reason why this line stops here and doesn't go to the bottom. And here you can see that the key brick one behaves pretty similar to a normal rechargeable battery in the AAA scale. So the same that you could use to power the hub. But the LEGO power functions are could last much longer. I suppose that in the eco mode, the key brick one would last much longer, but the voltage would be lower as well. So the boost mode is obviously the winner when it comes to output voltage, but it doesn't hold very long. And the normal mode is pretty similar to AAA rechargeable batteries, but it has less voltage. And next, we have a comparison between different battery boxes because I wanted to test if there is a difference between normal battery boxes, dumb battery boxes, and the hubs that can be programmed. So we have a hub that I programmed in Pybricks. With Pybricks, you can download programs on the hub. We will check later if, uh, if there's a difference between the Port Up app and Pybricks when it comes to the duration. But here I use Pybricks and I downloaded a program to the hub to work around every automatic turn off feature that the hub might have. Because for the measurements, it's always problematic when the battery box or the hub turns itself off because that would stop the measurement, although the batteries aren't empty. And here we have the Control Plus battery box, which actually has the best results. It surprised me a bit, but it's pretty simple in the inside. I already made a review for it and you can find it here. I linked it in the info card. And it's on top of everything, probably because it's so simple. And then we have the hub with pile bricks that uh, doesn't last as long, only eight hours compared to up to 10 hours. But the hub contains a Bluetooth chip. It contains a processor or a microcontroller that you can program. So it makes sense that it doesn't last as long. And in between, we have the power functions battery box. And all of these three are for AA batteries. So let's get to the last chart where we compare the performance between Pybricks and Bluetooth via the Powered Up app. You can see that they are pretty similar. I'd say that the differences are because of the measurement problems or because the measurement isn't exact. So there might be slight differences but the overall performance between Pybrix and uh, Powered Up app Bluetooth connection is pretty similar. Both last for a bit longer than three hours when it comes to AAA rechargeable batteries, I think. So this was it for this video. Keep in mind that I will post everything or that I will link everything or the raw files so that you can create your own comparisons in the description. So check that out if you want. Thanks for watching. Did you have any results that surprised you? because 
I was a bit surprised that the Keybrick one doesn't last as long as I thought, and the LEGO Power Functions rechargeable battery lasted pretty long, according to my results. So anyways, thanks for watching, see you in the next video, and bye!